chug, 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 chug.
this one. Oh, excellent. Good uh, morning uh, and welcome to Bishop Hanton Church uh, on this uh, Good Friday. Uh, it's lovely uh, to see you all today. Uh, today, uh, we, we come together as a special day uh, to remember that first Good Friday, the day uh, that Jesus uh, died on a cross. Uh, just let me read you some words from uh, John's Gospel. Earlier on, when Jesus speaking, he says this in John uh, 15, verse 13, he says, Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Uh, and so this morning, whatever age may be, uh, we're going to have a chance again to fix our eyes and gaze uh, upon that day to remember uh, what Jesus did, to, to understand a bit more what it means, but also uh, to grow in our love uh, and uh, care and concern for uh, Jesus. So uh, we're going to have a mixture of songs. All the words we need will be on the screens, uh, some Bible readings. Uh, Don's going to lead us through some, uh, some talks, uh, and we're going to uh, pray together. Uh, but let's uh, begin this morning uh, in prayer. Loving Father, we, we thank you for the familiar story of Easter. Uh, and we pray, Lord, that this morning, although we may have heard the words before, that you may help us to have a fresh joy and delight, humility, uh, as we look again at the cross as to why the cross was needed and what it meant for you to die on the cross for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, we're going to begin our, our service singing, uh, So Great is Jesus' Love. So if you're able, uh, please uh, stand. As far as east from the west, as far as east is from the west, as high the sky is from the depths, as long now to yesterday, our sins are cast away, so far away. Up higher, up higher than the stars we see, and wider than the galaxy, our motion depths to hell above, so great is Jesus' love, his love for us. My sin on Christ, he died for me. The guiltless judge, the guilty free. As far as east is from the west, as high the sky is from the depths, as long as now till yesterday, our sins are cast away so far away. And wider than the galaxy From ocean depths to heaven above So great is Jesus' love His love for us See again, my sin on Christ My sin on Christ He died for me The guiltless just the guilty free as far as east is from the west as high the sky is from the depths as long as now to yesterday our sins is cast away so far away last time up higher up higher than the stars we see and wider than the galaxy from ocean depths to heaven above so great is jesus love his love for us please be seated uh now uh, Easter is, uh, is, I think, my favourite time for Easter food. 
obviously it is, because you don't get it at Christmas, do you? <laughs> but seasonal food, Easter is my favorite time, uh, because two reasons. There's the eggs, but I'm going to put it to the side. But hot crust buns. Now, let me just, let's just have a quick uh, settle a, a, a debate there is. Uh, put your hand up if you have them toasted and buttered. Okay, hands down. And put your hand up if you do it the right way, just plain. Yes. Yes. Now, in fact, does anyone want, I've got four here. Does anyone want one? Hot crust bun? I've got a few. Look, they're just, like, have it. I've, got, I've got them kicking about. One, two. All right. Oh, dear. Oh, oh dear. Thank you, boys. Um, now, uh, w- w- hot cross buns have the bun of the cross on. They, they taste uh, amazing. Well, this morning, uh, what we're going to do is we're not going to be uh, all eating hot cross buns that Sunday night. This morning, we're going to hear again the story of Good Friday. And as we do that, we're going to taste and see that the Lord is good. As we hear again the familiar story, we're going to see and be reminded of the amazing love that Jesus had for you and for me. So with that in mind, uh, Clive is going to come and bring us our first reading. Good morning, everybody. First reading this morning is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 18, beginning at the first verse. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said, and Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Anas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if one man died for the people. Right, you're a lot at ease. Who are you? <laughs> no stalking in the ranks. Well, you're a rum lot of soldiers. What are you made of, I wonder? You, what's today? Friday. 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 Friday hasn't been invented yet. Let's try someone else. You with a funny hat. What's today? Uh, oh, goodness me. It's the Passover. How many of you have been in this city long enough? You should know that. What happens on Passover? A lot of sheep are being killed. That's what happens. So, let's do another test. You must have some brains amongst you. What city are we in? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Well done. One brain cell between you. So it's the Passover, there's a lot of sheep being killed 
there's a lot of blood. And if we didn't already have enough blood, the powers that be have decided that we're going to have some crucifixions today. And the bad news is that you guys are on duty. Uh, hence the early start. Now, I need to let you know uh, how this is going to work today. Number two section, put your hands up. <laughs> Trust me, you'd rather be in number two section. <laughs> number two section, you've got the easy job. So, uh, we've got a couple of thieves to get rid of. Uh, so, that will be your job, going to be fairly routine. Uh, it should have been, of course, Barabbas, but uh, we got two thieves uh, to go along as well. So, um, uh, usual routine, straightforward for you guys. Uh, number one section, well, that's the rest of you by the looks of it. Uh, as I said, you should have had Barabbas. Now, we'd all like to see in the back of Barabbas, wouldn't we? When I want an answer, I'll let you know. <laughs> In Athens, they call that a rhetorical question. We would all like to see the back of Barabbas. He's a nasty piece of work. He's been a pain in the neck for years. But, but, the powers that be have granted him a pardon. He is not going to die today. Instead, we are going to be dealing with this Jesus of Nazareth character. Who are we going to be dealing with? Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth what? <laughs> Sir. Thank you. <laughs> now, we don't know an awful lot about Jesus of Nazareth. The only thing I know about him is that he healed a mate of mine in Capernaum. He had a, a servant who was unwell, and he seems to have healed him. So uh, all I know about him is, is good stuff. But. That is not our problem. What isn't it? Not our problem. Quite right. It's not our problem. So, let me just run you through uh, what's going to happen, what's been going on so far. Uh, some of you were with us last night when we picked up uh, Jesus. Uh, he was in uh, Gethsemane, his usual haunt. Uh, so we picked him up there. Uh, he's gone through the usual stuff, so he's been tried by the Sanhedrin, he's been tried by Herod, he's been tried by Pilate, Pilate's had the death sentence. So we've gone through uh, all the paperwork, uh, that's all been dealt with, um, and now it's, uh, it's going to be uh, over to us. Now this is a bit of a, a special case, uh, we are in a, it's a bit of a rush job, as I say he was only picked up last night, he's gone through all four trials, uh, we've got to get him up on the cross pretty quickly and we've got to get him down again uh, by this evening. So uh, all of you made a pretty good start last night, he's had his first going over. Uh, technical term is brutalisation, I think, but uh, he's, had his, he's had his flogging. Uh, some of you went a bit far, I'm not sure about this. This thing here. Ooh. This is... Uh, I don't know which one of you came up with this bright idea, this sort of crown of thorns, but it's pretty sharp and it's pretty unpleasant, so, uh, so well done. Good job. Uh, interesting, though that you thought of putting a crown on him, because you're not the only one who's been thinking like that. Um, Pilate has decided in his wisdom uh, to give the usual death sentence notices. I've got them here. Whoa. So what have we got here? We have got number one. Who was in number one section again? There we are. One sign for the thief, two signs for the two thief. Those are the two uh, thieves to be crucified. Um, Pilate has put this sign up for number two section. You guys seem to want that one. Can you tell me what it says? Can any of you not read? It is in three different languages, but see if you can translate it into English. Well, it says, King of the Jews. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. So whoever dreamed up the crown idea, well, Pilate might sort of agree with you. Because this man has claimed to be some sort of king. Uh, now, we're not quite sure what sort of king he is. Uh, he was a bit vague with Pilate, uh, but whatever he said was enough to worry Mrs. Pilate, because uh, she doesn't think uh, this man should be going to the cross. But there we are. That's what's going to happen. So you've got the signs. Uh, you know what to do. Let me just warn you about what's going to happen next. Um, three lots of people to be on the lookout today. 
One is the crowds. Now, uh, those of you, hands up if you were on duty last Sunday. Some of you, I know, were here. A few of you, excellent. Well, you'll have seen what happened last Sunday. Uh, the crowds all uh, supporting Jesus, all very behind him. First thing this morning, those crowds were after his execution. So we do not know how the crowds are going to behave. Uh, they could go either way. So just watch out for the crowds. Second big group of people to look out for are his supporters. Now, he's got a, a bunch of men who were following him. They've all done a runner. Nearly all of them uh, disappeared last night. Uh, so it's really only the women who were seeing much of, I suspect, today. Uh, you might see his mum around. Uh, you might see uh, other women. We don't expect them to be uh, much of a threat. There are two blokes who are a bit weird. Uh, one called Peter, one called John. Now, last night, Peter pulled a sword on Malchus, high priest servant, um, took his ear off. Um, strangely, he seems to be back on this morning, so not quite sure what happened there. But uh, watch out for Peter and John. Bit unpredictable. I'm told they've only got two swords between them, but either way, as Peter likes having a go at ears, <coughs> helmets on, please, all the time. <laughs> Finally, just a word about the locals. Uh, we're going to be doing the usual walk uh, through the city, out through the city gates, the usual place, the place of the skull, you know where it is. Um, Jesus is pretty exhausted. He's been up all night. You've given him his going over. Uh, he's not in much of a state already. So the chances are you'll have to do the usual thing of getting someone involved to help carrying his cross. Can I just point out, this is important, do not... Do not involve anybody local. Pick someone who looks foreign. The other thing I should have said, by the way, is do not change that sign. That sign that says King of the Jews, the priests have already asked to get it changed. They will probably ask you again. Do not change it. Pilate, in one of his brighter moments, said, what I have written, I have written. So he wants that to stay exactly like it is. What anybody else says, Pilate wants that to say, Jesus is king of the Jews. Right, that is about it. We need to get going. Uh, we've got the signs. Uh, number one section, you need your crown. You might as well give it to the king on his way out. And uh, I will see you uh, at Golgotha. Carry on. Thank you, sir. Um, the events of Good Friday, uh, what the soldiers did and what Jesus went through, again, uh, words that we're familiar with, but just hearing again. Uh, and again, uh, we're going to, to uh, stand and sing again where we say, uh, once again, Jesus, I look on your sacrifice. Uh, once again, we're going to ponder our, our eyes and our hearts uh, to what happened on that first Good Friday. So if you're able, uh, will you uh, please stand uh, as we sing. Jesus Christ, I think upon your sacrifice you became nothing poured out to death many times i wondered at your gift of love i'm in that place once again i'm in that place once again once again Oh, and once again I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you. Once again I pour out my life. Now you Exalted to the highest place, King of the heavens, where one day I'll bow. But for now, I marvel at this saving grace, and I'm full of praise once again. I'm full of praise, oh, I'm full of praise once again. 
once again I look upon the cross where you died. I'm humbled by your mercy and I'm broken inside. Once again I thank you, once again I pour out my life. Please be seated. Uh, and now we're going to hear again uh, as Clive comes to bring us the, the second part uh, of our reading this morning. The second reading this morning is again taken from John's Gospel, chapter 19, uh, beginning at verse 17 which can be found on page 1087 of the Church Bibles. John 19, chapter 17. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, divided them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one place from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled. That said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garments. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it and put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head 
and gave up his spirit. Now it was the day of preparation and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. So was Jesus a king? That was the question. That was why the soldiers made the cross, they made the, uh, the horrible crown, isn't it? Was Jesus the king? Well, our centurion did his job, didn't he? We just heard from the reading. Uh, the, the crucifixions sort of went off as planned. The disciples didn't cause any trouble. Uh, and it all went fairly straightforwardly. Except other stuff did happen, didn't it? And when the centurion saw how Jesus died on the cross, and when he saw the other things that the other Gospels tell us a bit more about, about the, the world going dark, and the earthquake, and people coming back to life, uh, and the temple in the curtain, turn, temple being curtain in the temple, being split in half, then he looked at Jesus on the cross, and the other Gospels say, he said, surely this man was the Son of God. Surely Jesus really was a king. You see, he knew Jesus was innocent. He knew Jesus didn't deserve to die. He knew Jesus was the kindest, best person who had ever lived. He knew that someone like that had to be God's son. Now that leaves us with a huge question, doesn't it? If this is such a nice, kind person, if this is God's son, well in that case, why did he have to die? Well, let's uh, try and illustrate it uh, like this. Way back in time, God wanted us to live with him as friends. So what have we got here? That's a nice white sheet, so let's make that side God. Because I didn't want to try and draw God, as you will see when you see my picture of people. <laughs> oh, we'll go up here. We'll go up here. So that is how we were designed to be. We were designed to be living with, alongside, and friendly with God. So, Ben, can you find me a volunteer? Huh. There's a funny thing. Let's have a volunteer up there. Well, he doesn't look too forced labour. Right, there we go. So there are we, and there is God, and we are designed to be like this living alongside God, knowing him, talking to him, and just being in fellowship with him. But sadly, we misbehaved. And you can see some verses up on the screen that describe what happened. Um, you probably might get a bit nervous, Ben, at this point, because um, what happens is stuff begins to interfere with this relationship, and it begins to separate us from God. Would you like to rescue your son before it gets messy? <laughs> Because as we rebel from God, and as we don't behave as he does, then slowly, well not slowly actually, we become separated. And everything goes wrong. And at that point, we're separated from God. Our rebellion has driven us away. And you can see some verses on the screen, which uh, I can't read even with my glasses on. So I'm going to have to stand down here and look at them. There we are. So Isaiah 59 says, Our iniquities have separated us from God. The bad thing we've done has separated from God. And the result of that is that we're going to die. We can't have eternal life with God. And there's nothing we can do to fix it. 
Jesus says, everyone who sins is a slave to God. So there's this big gap, and I can't do anything about it. So why did Jesus die? Well, he died to provide the solution to that problem. Someone's got the clickers. I don't know who's turning the slides on. Where did the clickers go? <laughs> ah, cunningly concealed. There we go. So more familiar verses, perhaps. So we'll have to come down here to look at them. So to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Through Jesus, that relationship can be restored. And because Jesus is God's son, by his power, he can bear our sins so that we might live for righteousness. And that means that we have life on offer. Because where the wages of sin is gift, the gift of God is eternal life. So when Jesus dies on the cross, a lot of things going on. He's powerful to defeat death. He takes the punishment that we deserve, and that relationship is restored. Now, at this point, any decent visual aid would take something like the cross and show it bridging that gap, wouldn't it? Uh, but I haven't got a decent visual aid. Because the fact is that sometimes we think of the cross, a bit like these things you can pick up in Jerusalem, as sort of almost like lucky charms, as tokens. Because actually the cross is just a piece of wood. It isn't the cross that puts us right with God. It's not trusting in the cross that puts us right so, gentlemen, I need some help at this point. Because, where shall I go, here? It's very precise. Where would you like me? So the fact is, ready? There we go. So it isn't, G, it isn't the cross that puts us right with Christ. Am I there? Yeah, delirious. Mm, move me back a bit. <laughs> move face. Yeah. More. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. More. Yeah. Bring towards me. Oh, that's it. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So there we go. You see. So it isn't the cross that bridges the gap between man and God. It's Jesus Himself, and it's Jesus who we have to trust in. Ben, anything to add? We had, we had a board last time, but I just wonder if maybe... Don't nag around. If we could kind of, <laughs> you know, get going. Let's just, just try this a minute, shall we? One, two, three. Oh, no. Ready, William? Ready? And there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll just... Thank you so much. Would you like to explain why you did that while well, someone gets me down? <laughs> Chat. So, so of course, let's just help here. So of course, there we go. Thank you very much. <laughs> because the, cross, it, the death of Jesus wasn't just a bit of wood. It was a person. Uh, Jesus himself made the way by not having a plank on a couple of bits of wood, but actually by laying his arms out upon a piece of wood in order that we again would be made right with God. Thank you. I thought I might need a bit of backup at that point. <laughs> so, familiar reading. Isaiah 53, verse 4. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And later on, we'll be back just to reflect a little bit on what that means for each one of us. Uh, thank you, John.
uh, not just for being a, a stable board, but actually for showing us and reminding us of that. It's not just a clever gimmick. It's a real picture that helps us remind us that Good Friday is about a real person who does a real act to enact a real salvation for you and for me. Uh, and Don will help us reflect a bit more of that in a moment. But now we're going to sing again how deep the Father's love that would make a wretch his treasure. So if you're able, uh, please stand uh, as we sing. Well, we've heard uh, what happened on the first uh, Good Friday. Uh, Easter is coming. Jesus will be back. But for the moment, we're focusing on Good Friday. And we've heard how Jesus dies, and we've tried to explain a little bit why he died, but now it's kind of over to you. Really, It's over to you. And here is, I think this is a bit of a strange picture, uh, but it's one of a huge series painted by an artist called James Tissot. He's a French artist uh, painting in the late 19th century. And he painted lots of pictures of the life of Christ. Um, and this is his picture of the end of Good Friday. And it's called Jesus Alone on the Cross or Christ alone on the cross. 
And you can see that the two fees we talked about earlier, well, they've gone. Most of the other characters have disappeared. And really, there's just this one single figure, solitary figure, on the cross, the body that's left at the end of the day. And I'm going to invite you to do uh, one of three different things right now. Um, I'd like you just to, to spend a bit of time looking at this picture, and somebody's going to do something musical in a minute while we, while we just have a couple of minutes thinking. And maybe, if you're younger, you simply want to try and work out what's going on in this picture. Uh, so you might want to chat to an adult you're with or whatever, and just see who are the people in it. See if you can see how many dogs there are in the picture. James Tisso liked, liked painting dogs. That's one thing you could do. The second thing you could do is just think about that title, Jesus Alone on the Cross. Because I think what Tiso was trying to tell us was that this is almost the point when Jesus cries out, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? Oh, it's illustrating that point. Jesus is all alone. He has all the sin, all the evil, all the horrible stuff in your life, all the horrible stuff in the universe, all on him, just alone. And in taking that on to himself, he makes all things good again. And that's just such an incredible truth. I think the more I go on in the Christian life, the more I just cannot get to grips with what is going on on that cross on Good Friday. So maybe if you're a Christian, uh, it may be just a chance just to reflect on that. But then there's one more take, isn't there, on this idea of Jesus alone on the cross. And that is that only Jesus can sort this problem out. There's no other religion that offers us peace with God. There's no self-help program. It is only Jesus. And if that's something you've never thought about, well, maybe that's a claim to come to grips with now, because this is Jesus alone on the cross, the only way to God the Father. If you use the, uh, the BH little prayer diary, uh, you will see not only are we praying for John and Sue Puttock today, which is a good thing to do, but there's also a great verse from the hymn, there was no other good enough to pay the price of sin, he only can unlock the gate of heaven and let us in. So we're gonna have a bit of musical tinkling. Um, let's just have, I don't know, 90 seconds, a couple of minutes, just reflecting on what that picture may mean for you, and then we'll carry on with whatever happens next.
Thank you, John. Uh, we're going to uh, continue now uh, reflecting uh, as, we, uh, as Jenny Raven comes to lead us uh, in our prayers. Jenny. As we continue in prayer, God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection this Easter weekend, today we're focusing on his amazing sacrifice of dying on the cross for our sins. And we rejoice in the promise that he will rise again. At this time, we pray for our broken world, for the destruction and death being caused. We pray for our country. We pray for the strife that people are going through, for broken lives and broken hope and ask for strength to live at peace, asking world leaders, governments, and local authorities to support the weakest people they have charge over. We pray for justice and peace in war-torn areas of the world. We pray for our mission partners across the world praying that they will share their joy and their love of their knowledge of you. And at this time, we pray for our royal family, especially King Charles and Kate, the Princess of Wales, as they undergo cancer treatment. We pray for our families and friends who may be struggling or unwell. And in a few moments of quiet, I ask that each one of you bring people to the Lord. Thank you, Father. We know that you hear our prayers. And I ask that you give each one of us compassion to support and care for one another. We are your body here on earth. And thank you, Lord, that you are here with us. And I'd like us all to join together to say the Lord's Prayer. It should be on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you uh, very much, Jenny. Uh, our service is nearly at an end, but we're going to close by singing uh, the great Good Friday uh, sort of modern hymn, Oh, to See the Dawn, where we talk all about all that Jesus uh, accomplished for us by standing in the gap for you and for me. So if you're able, uh, please stand uh, as we sing.
Please be seated. Uh, thank you all, all for coming this morning. Uh, just to remind you that uh, we have our Easter Sunday service. The story's not finished. Uh, all the services you can see in the back of the order of uh, service at 8, uh, all age at 10, and then a, a praise, parish praise event at 6.30. You'd be uh, most welcome to, to come along uh, to any of, uh, of those. Uh, just don't forget that the clocks uh, go forward uh, on Sunday as well. Uh, then uh, this afternoon, uh, we have again our Hour at the Cross at 2 o'clock, uh, uh, just a bit more, <laughs> uh, 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 a quieter, reflective service, uh, again, focusing our gaze on that familiar story of all that Jesus uh, achieved 
uh, on Good Friday. Uh, at the end of the service, we've got refreshments uh, just at the, the back of church uh, this morning. Uh, but let, as we close, uh, let me pray. Just those words again that we started from John 15, uh, verse 13. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. Father, we thank you that Jesus so loved us that he laid down his life for us upon the cross to make a way that we who were far away were lost, have been found because of Jesus, brought back home so we can be united. Thank you, Lord, for Good Friday. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you that it is finished. Amen.